Today is a bit of a bench video because what we're going to do is talk a bit about what I've been doing today, which is converting some stuff from different radio systems. And then we're going to be installing HD0 on this. Now, Today has been a bit of a chance for me to have a catch up on all those little jobs that I haven't been able to do for ages. One of them is finally transition all of my tracer based aircraft over to Express LRS. As someone who sort of talks about this stuff and tests this stuff, I try to have aircraft on as many systems as I can. But the reality is for me, tracer is just a system that I don't feel really seems to be going anywhere. I don't see the need for making any content on it moving forward, even if there is this LoRa based update that may potentially come. And for me, I think it's time to leave it behind and move forward. Part of this decision has been made as a result of Radio Master releasing their new AG01 mini gimbals for the Zorro and TX12. Now, I have held back from jumping onto one of those smaller radios because I felt for me the Mambo was the perfect mix of size, features and capabilities. However, I have actually tried a TX-16 with the AG-01s and I'll be honest, I fell in love with those gimbals and if it wasn't for the fact of the size of that radio, I would have transitioned over to that before. When the Zorro released, I was extremely close to ordering one. However, there were a few things that put me off, including the size of the batteries and there wasn't enough to drag me over from the Mambo, but that has now changed with the release of the AG-01. G01 minis. That has pushed me into transitioning away from Tracer for good. I'm going to be leaving the Mambo behind. Very sad because I think this is a very, very good radio, but the reality is it just can't keep up with what Radio Master are doing with the likes of the Zorro that has Express LRS built in, a lot of nice features, and now this new AG01 mini gimbal option. I haven't actually ordered any of that yet and I'm going to be doing that in the next couple of weeks and when that does come in I will be making a separate video on that and I will be doing that content so if you are interested in seeing that please do check it out. But Tracer is gone for me, it's over, everything's now on Express LRS. I have kept I think two of my aircraft on um, Crossfire and that is because I do still like having a 868 or 900 meg system. Reality is where I am in the UK I probably don't need it. The reality is Express LRS on 2.4 will outfly anything I'm probably doing but I do still like to have multiple systems and I do think for me especially the balance between Express LRS and Crossfire is nice. It does mean when I move to the Zorro I'm probably going to have to buy another module because I do have a full size uh, Crossfire module. I could keep the Mambo and just run that with Crossfire but I'll be honest, I'd rather transition to one remote than having multiples. So my plan is to sell the Mambo. I'm going to sell it with all of the Tracer receivers I've got as well. And then I'll sell the full size Crossfire module and then get the smaller one that is going to go on the back of the Zorro. I could stay and go with the TX-12, but I'm really being tempted on the Zorro. And that's the route I have put my head in and that's the one I'm most likely going to go down. Tracer is a bit of a strange one in the end when you think about it because it really hasn't developed. Yes, it's OK. It's more than capable for what it's designed for, but it just can't keep up with the likes of Express LRS. And even if we do see something like a LoRa upgrade for Tracer in the future, it really isn't anything I feel I'm going to be making any content on or is really relevant compared to what we're seeing from Express LRS. One of the nice options of moving over to the Zorro as well is I'll be able to take full advantage of all of the Express LRS capabilities and that will be nice too rather than some of the limitations that we've got on the Mambo. Now 
That's really where I'm at on the RC control side of things. I'm not really going to be pushing any more on that. And you're probably not going to see too much content on the RC control side other than the new radio and the new setup with the gimbals. And I will cover that when that arrives. The next thing, though, I am going to do today is do some work on this. And this is the Beta FPV, uh, what is it? It is the 95X. Now, Beta FPV sent me this quite a while ago. This was the digital version, which was Vista ready. It had a Vista in it, but I'll be honest, I was never particularly happy with the way this aircraft flew. The motors were always very hot on it. And with the Vista in the back, it wasn't particularly great. And I'll be honest, it's been sitting in the back corner there for some time. Today, though, what I'm going to do is we're going to convert it to HD0, because I think HD0 is probably a very, very good option for this. They have just released some really nice new, very low weight camera and VTX for whoops, but I don't have that one at this time. What I do have though is the original whoop VTX and I do have the original HD0 camera, which is in a box here with the upgraded lens. That's this one, which is the run cam. So what I'm going to do is mount that into the Beta FPV today, get that up and running and try and see, because I haven't checked if I can do this yet, if we can get the new Beta flight on this as well and just see how it performs. So what we'll do is hop over to the bench and we will start getting the installation of HD0 underway. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is get this apart, get the bottom cover off, and then have a look at how this HD0 board is going to fit in. As I've said, this originally was designed to take a Vista on the back, and whilst it flew okay, it was really not something I was particularly happy with overall, and I just felt it, it wasn't behaving the way I would have liked it to, I haven't actually checked if Beta FPV have released any new firmware, which is obviously a newer updated PID tune for it, because it just didn't feel right. But I think what would be nice with it is to get a HD0 board in it, which will give us an opportunity to sort of give it a bit of a fresh start, actually. Now, getting this bottom cover off is always a bit of a pig because it clips under the props at the back. There we go. I'm gonna probably need to take these back props off anyway, which we'll do in a second. But as you can see, we've got the main board, we've got our area here. And then if I recall, this was a plug and play harness for the DJI input. I don't know where that harness is, so I'm not going to be using that. I'm gonna to have to have a poke around and find um, some pads. What we're also gonna to have to do on this is put in a receiver because there is no receiver on this one as standard and it was originally using the DJI one, which obviously we're not going to be using. The board is going to be this, which is the HD0 Whoop board. I'm just gonna see, is it gonna go in? Or is it going to give me some trouble? It's not gonna go into that slot there, but it will stack on top of the flight controller from the looks of it, which is possibly going to be an option. However, looking at this, there is some sizing, but we can remove the corners off this board, which is an option, which we'll take a look at in a minute. We can actually pop the corners off and that'll allow us to get it in a bit further. It's going to be tight. I do wonder, will it pop in there with the corners off actually? Let's have a look. I really do need to remove these props, don't I? Okay, let's get that done a second. There we go, we've got the props off on the back, so now, we can start looking at what the options are for getting this in. That new Whoop board would probably be a better option for this, but I am really thinking I want to get this one in here. So I'm gonna just try and figure out a solution that is going to work on this, even 
if it means trimming back a bit of this plastic here, I don't particularly mind doing that. Whether it can be double stacked down here, I'm not sure because there is there is space, but it's it's not dramatic. If we pop the bottom cover back on, you can see through that there is a lot of space down to the flight controller. However, that space is actually in this area of the board, so we would have to get it up into here rather than in that bottom end. For instance, that's the USB port that goes over that. So it would need to be going down into that area of the panel down there, which it's not going to do. Okay, what I need to do is have a bit of a look of what my intention of this is going to be, do a bit of figuring out, and then I'll come back. So after a bit of uh, persuasion with some things like this, and maybe something like this. I think I've got a space now for the board. What I've done is carved the plastic down a little bit on each side and I've just made it more flat. And now the VTX is able to sit flat in the back. You can see the bottom of the board there. I'm not sure which way around I'll do it. I might flip it in a minute, but I've got it there now. I'm just gonna get some things just to hold it in place to stop it moving around. We can put some bolts through it, but I'll probably put some very fine cable ties through actually the bolts themselves. I'm most likely going to flip the board the other way because it'll probably get better airflow that way. Um, but it certainly is there. It's going to give us an input. So what we're going to do now is get the motors off on the front. Sorry, the props. I think the best thing will be to get the board out, or at least I need to go and have a look at what the pinout is on this, get the wiring done, and then go from there. So I've just spent a bit of time trying to understand the wiring on this, and there are a few quirks on this toothpick flight controller that I wasn't aware of until now, and that is that the serial receiver is a standard on SBUS, which comes in via this digital port here. I finally found a harness which fits, so I've got one of them so we can put the HD0 onto that. The receiver port is this one over here, which is using TX and RX3, which steals RX3 from there. However, there is no pad out I can see for TX and RX3 either. So I have to use this receiver plug if I want to be able to put an external receiver on, which is going to be the Express LRS. So what I've ended up having to do is make a bit of a wiring harness for this. This was a much bigger one that I've cut down. I've done it a few times, actually. If you haven't got one the right size, but you've got a bigger one, you can always snip it down with a pair of snips and then get it to plug in. So now we're going to be able to have our digital TX for the VTX, as well as our receiver on that one there. So it's time to get soldering everything up. So the receiver's done, the wiring is done on the VTX as well. I'm not gonna plug that in a second because I need to find an antenna for it. But what I wanna just do first is check that I haven't made any mistakes on the receiver. So what we're gonna do is power it up and just check that we get the expected behavior. There we go, we've got the LED flashing, we've got power. So hopefully that means we've got receiver input. So what I'm going to do is just quickly plug in beta flight with the existing uh, install and just configure it and make sure that's working as expected. Something I just spotted in the manual for this flight controller is I need to bridge a solder pad over here because I've changed the receiver input type. If it's SBUS, I don't need to do anything. However, because we're using Crossfire, I need to actually bridge these two solder pads here. So what we need to do is put some solder on and just bridge them across, making sure that they are actually touching. 
There we go, looking good. That then should enable that type of receiver on the flight controller. So I've just finished flashing the receiver via the Betaflight pass-through with my Express LRS build. That's all up and running. The ports are set correctly and the configuration now has been changed over from SBUS to CRSF. And if we look under the receiver tab, everything is looking good. I've got connection, I've got control. So the receiver is all done. It's all working as expected. Time to move over to that HD0 VTX. So I've got the VTX in place with the wiring connected. We've got the MIPI cable coming over here. It is a little bit tight. I have actually got a longer one I may be able to use, but I'm gonna try and get away with this one rather than use the longer one because I'd rather keep the longer one for another build. I've also got the antenna on. Now this is the antenna off the Vista. You can see it says Cadex on it. I actually just realized I don't have any UFL right-hand circular polarized antennas. Yes, I know I'm gonna get a 3 dB loss on that. I'll deal with that later. This is really at this moment in time is just about getting it up and running. I can swap it fairly easily, um, but yeah that's something I'm going to have to resolve later. So what we'll now do is get it all in. I do need to do a firmware update on this VTX before I push it in, although I can get the cable down there on the side. You can just see it down there, which is quite good, but it does need a firmware update because there is new firmware out. So I'm going to do that first before I button it all up and then we'll get it up and running and see if all of that works as expected. Okay, so as you can see, the build is finished. Now I've spent quite a bit of time getting beta flight correctly configured on this. We've now got 4.3 installed because there was a build for this flight controller, but there was quite a bit of configuration because of the whole setup of this thing, but it is all done now. And I've even installed a three inch preset from UAV tech, I think it was. Had to dial that back a little bit, but overall it's actually flying very, very well. As you can see, we've got that HD zero camera up front and we've got the VTX in the back. I ended up using a piece of foam to hold it in place under the back frame rather than actually putting screws or bolts through the VTX itself. It just holds it absolutely fine. There's no movement. It's absolutely solid and it's nice and easy to take out if I need to do it. Yes, I am still running that Vista antenna, which is left-hand circular polarized. I know I need to order in another UFL antenna for this, but it isn't going to affect any of the use I'm using here right now as well. Now, I've done a couple of test flights in here because it's been absolutely chucking down with rain. I haven't been able to get outside with it yet. Nothing fantastic, just a bit of a move around in the workshop. As you can see, I don't have a lot of space to be able to do it, but I have done some tests and it's up and running. Well, it was until I crashed at least. So overall, the craft feels good. It's ready to go. It's got Express LRS installed. It's got HD zero. So I'm looking forward to putting a bit more flight time on this one now that I've been able to bring it back up to speed with a more modern system. Again, getting rid of the DJI on it, making it lighter, and making sure that we've got Express LRS on it too. Now the build is finished, I've had a chance to put it on the scales and it weighs 104 grams. That is 12 and a half grams lighter than the spec of the digital version on the Beta FPV website with the Vista on board. So there's quite a bit of weight saving to be had. And I'm not even using that new HD Zero camera and Whoop VTX that has just been released. What's also interesting is it's just five grams more than the analog version. And I'm sure we can get a lot closer to that with that new HD zero camera, especially. And it's gonna be interesting to see the kind of things people are putting this new HD zero system into as we've seen the board shrink down and the cameras get smaller as well. That's 
pretty much it for this video. It wasn't really designed to be anything particularly special. I do apologize for the filming over the bench. There was a problem with the bitrate on the camera and I didn't realize that until afterwards, but it is what it is. It isn't end of the world, but I have resolved that moving forward. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you'd like to support us, there are links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description too. Also, please do consider giving the video a like. It does help the analytics. And if you've got any questions, put them in the comment section and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can.